Aloha everyone and welcome back to the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for July 25th, 2018. Tonight there's a few interesting things to talk about and uh, also to show you. Um, but before we get started, if you haven't subscribed already, you know, why don't you go ahead and do so now. That way you can be notified of any new updates or videos that I post. And uh, of course, if you like this video, don't forget to thumbs up it. So anyways, let's get to the update. The USGS reports for Wednesday, July 25th, 2018, 9.15 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, that Fissure 8 continues to erupt lava into the channel leading northeastward from the vent. No new overflows were reported yesterday following the summit collapse event at 6.41 Hawaii Standard Time. No overflows were reported this morning either. In the last day, the lava flow in the Ahalanui area has not extended significantly westward. The flow remains less than 0.1 miles from the Pohoiki boat ramp in Isaac Hale Park. The active ocean entry is still a few hundred yards to the east of this lava flow edge. No other fissures are active as of this morning. Lava fountaining at the active vent remains relatively low and is mostly below the height of the current cone, about 50 meters or 55 yards. Bailey's hair and other lightweight volcanic glass fragments from the lava fountain at Fissure 8 continue to fall downwind of the fissure, dusting the ground with a, within a few hundred meters yards of the vent. High winds may carry lighter particles to greater distances. Residents are urged to minimize exposure to these volcanic particles which can cause skin and eye irritation similar to, similar to volcanic ash. Over on Highway 130, just south of Leilani Estates, observations are collected on a daily basis and currently there's been no significant changes in temperature, crack width, or gas emissions. Up on the Kilauea Volcano Summit, the most recent collapse event occurred at 6.41 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time yesterday, July 24th, and was similar in character and magnitude to previous events. Seismicity has increased steadily since then. Since yesterday afternoon, the number of events per hour has fluctuated between about 20 and 40. The next collapse event is expected this afternoon or evening. Inward slumping of the rim and walls of Halemaumau continues. Sulfur dioxide emissions from the volcano summit are very low. This gas and minor amounts of ash are resuspended by wind and are being transported downwind. Small bursts of ash and gas may coincide with the summit collapse events. The summit region is occasionally impacted by sulfur dioxide from the lower east rift zone eruption. And now for the EPA air monitoring sensor report. The Pahoa High School sensor currently reads at 9.15 p.m. for sulfur dioxide 0 0.0027 parts per million. The Nanavali Estates sensor currently reads at 9.22 p.m. for sulfur dioxide 0, 0.0 parts per million and for hydrogen sulfide 0, 0.0 parts per million. In Leilani Estates at 9.22 p.m. The sensor for SO2 read 0, 0.0 parts per million and 0, 0.0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. And finally, for the sensor located at the Kalapana Seabue Estates at 9.22 p.m., sulfur dioxide reading was 0, 0.0 parts per million and the hydrogen sulfide reading was 0, 0.0 parts per million. And now it's time for a look at that there. The first video we're going to look at is from USGS and it's of Hale Ma'u Ma'u uh, during an earthquake which is happening now in the video. If you look to your middle left, you'll see the uh, edge of the, the crater there collapsing uh, again on itself. Um, it's pretty interesting to watch. And as you can see by the, uh, the ash cloud that's starting to rise, that uh, the, the ash and, and debris that's coming out of these collapse events isn't necessarily, you know, from an explosion. In this case, it's more of just a collapse event now, it looks like. And that's all rock dust from the, the collapsing uh, material on the, you know, rim of the crater as it falls in, uh, which is exactly what m one would expect when a large amount of rock, you know, caves in on itself. It's going to create a dust cloud. So, um, and of course, the USGS doesn't report uh, that there's a, a lot of SO2 associated there. Uh, most of the SO2 up in volcano area is coming from the rift zone. Next, I want to look at the Fissure 8 video that uh, I showed 
during the uh, USGS report. If you look at the top left corner of the screen, there you see Nohea Street, and that uh, intersects right there with Leilani Avenue. Now if you look at the top right middle area, you see those little puffs of white. That's the fissure line going down rift uh, towards the uh, uh, Kapoho area. Um, I just thought it was pretty cool. And if you look right there, uh, to the left of the cone, you'll see uh, the lava tube still there. However, it is smoking uh, quite a bit. The next thing I want you to look at that there is, is right there in the center of this photograph. Uh, that is uh, what they call ponding in the channel, if I understand the USGS people right. Um, so that is a actual potential area for breakouts and overflows. Uh, if anything down the, the channel towards the ocean clogs up, uh, by the way, this is located uh, apparently looks like just west or westward of the uh, Kapoho crater. The next photograph I want to show you is really cool and I'm kind of excited to show it to you. Uh, but again, it's one of those things that uh, it's here today and gone tomorrow kind of situation. So look at that there. And what we're looking at is apparently a black sand sandbar, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, it's formed out there on the southern edge of the flow that is in the ocean, uh, just north of Isaac Holly Park. Um, however, uh, as I'm going, as you'll see in these next photos that I'm going to show you. Um, it's there but then it seems to be gone and I'm not sure well I'll show you here so let me go to the next photo as you can see in this photo uh, that's looking towards the north and that's Isaac Holly Park uh, and above it is the what's left of the sandbar um, this is photos taken after the previous ones uh, according to timestamps um, and then we have this one and according to the timestamp on this one, it was taken uh, July 25th today. And as you can see, it's either one of two things. Either the sandbar has washed away or, or been taken away with the tide, or the lava has advanced and filled in the little bay area that was being created. Um, but you can still see in the photo across the, the middle to the right, uh, that dark line that is... Um, black sand uh, beaches now up on the edge of the, the lava flows but of course you know here one day gone the next so who knows what we're going to get when this is over okay and that does it for look at that there now in a previous video um, I asked everybody you know once this was over what would y'all like to see or you know you know for me on the channel you know what would y'all be interested in and uh, a lot of you know people seem to say they want to see more of the island and you know and other places and you know things of that nature um well just so everybody knows i don't know if y'all are aware but i do have a uh i think it's like maybe 30 videos maybe less i, I don't remember the actual count but it's it's a good good quantity of them uh from places all over the the island uh well not all over the island but mostly the, the east side um that i've already done uh so you can find them uh you know in the video list but they're going to be way down at the bottom of course um i also created a playlist that that has all of them starting from the very first video i posted to the last video i posted prior to this eruption and this video that you're looking at here is actually the, uh, me taking ATV out over the lava flats uh, to, to an area north of the Champagne Ponds and uh, we end up finding this, this uh, really cool area which is uh, this black sand uh, area. It's not a beach, it goes out to the cliff, but it's like on, on the top of a, a bluff there and it's just this stretch of black sand and uh, it's really fun to ride in. So, uh, I just wanted to show you all that. Okay, and that'll do it for this episode of the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update. Um, remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notifications. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you liked the video, which I really hope you did. And uh, don't forget, uh, I have my photos available on Smug Mug and my Redbubble account. Links for those are in the descriptions. Uh, you can view them or even uh, buy items with uh, the photos printed on them. T-shirts, phone cases, um, 
prints. It, it's really pretty cool. Uh, thank you to everybody that has already done so. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, I guess that'll do it for tonight, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Have a good morning, afternoon, or evening. This has been the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates Update for July 25th, 2018.